William Wallace Ford was born in Waverly, Virginia, a town of less than 500 souls near Jamestown, the site of the first permanent English settlement in America. He enlisted in the Army in early 1918 and later received an appointment to West Point. After graduation, he requested field artillery service and spent his first nine months of training at Camp Knox, later renamed Fort Knox in Kentucky. Most field artillery guns at that time were pulled by six horses, and to Ford, it was just like home. But rather than pulling wagons, his horses pulled the guns. He continued his training in Montauk, Long Island, New York. He enjoyed horseback riding as a form of off-duty relaxation. On one of his rides, he met a lovely local lady rider, Alice Trowbridge Harris. A recent Smith College graduate, she would soon become his wife. Their marriage would last for 53 years. Subsequent assignments included Fort Bliss in Texas, where he took private flight training at a civilian airport, and in 1932 received his amateur pilot's license after 25 hours in an open cockpit biplane. Additional duties included teaching in several college ROTC programs. From 1936 to 1939, by then a captain, he served in the new unit at Eastern Kentucky State Teachers College, now EKU at Richmond. While there, he bought a two-place rear wind Sportster, which he based at Cool Meadow Airport, a grass strip, and Lexington Second Airport. During his years in Lexington, Ford became constantly aware of the growing need to provide better information to artillery units in order to improve accuracy. Ground-based observers were virtually useless when the target was out of sight. Aerial observation required heavier planes, which were often based at a distant airport and sometimes had trouble even finding the target. In short, the existing process did not work well. His combined experience as an artillery man and light plane pilot came into focus. He was one of the first to recognize the practicality of each artillery unit having its own air observation post. With its own light planes operating from nearby roads or small pastures with their own pilot and observer, they would stay in continuous contact by radio to the battalion commander. His authorship of a thought-provoking article in the May 1941 issue of the official U.S. Field Artillery Journal entitled Wings for Santa Barbara focused attention on his advanced thinking. He gained vigorous support for his idea by many, including General Blood and Guts Patton himself, who was also a light plane pilot. The concept was demonstrated and proven. Soon students, both officers and enlisted men, all licensed pilots, were learning Ford's tactics. Training began with 24 Piper J-3 Cubs. Pilots were taught both tactical flying and aircraft maintenance. For artillery spotting, they had to learn to fly the unnatural way, low and slow, i.e. low to avoid hostile aircraft, and slow to land in the shortest possible distance, even at times on curved roads and on the sides of hills. The Pearl Harbor attack had accelerated all military training, and in June 1942, the War Department authorized the creation of the Permanent Department of Air Training, which would later evolve into today's Army Aviation School. With his training program going well, Ford, by now a Brigadier General, sought to put his methods into practice and was successful in joining the 97th Infantry Division, which had been ordered to join the battle in Europe. Arriving in France in early December 1944, they were almost immediately in combat, and Ford flew missions whenever possible. As they fought eastward, they were suddenly involved in the Battle of the Bulge, which yielded some bitter battle experiences. They eventually fought their way to the Czech border. With the German surrender on May 8th, the 87th was to return to the States to train for the impending invasion of Japan, but the atomic bombs ended the war. Post-war duties took him to Fort Sill and to the Canal Zone for more flying. Later at Fort Bragg, he was involved in the selection of the Cessna L-19 as the replacement for the L-4 and the Stenson L-5. His final assignment was in France and Germany, where he was intensely involved as part of the NATO effort to build up the Defense Force of Western Europe. On August 31, 1954, a final formal review of his command was held, and he was decorated with the Légion des Honneurs by a grateful French government. After 37 years of service, the wagon soldier looked forward to a second career. Feeling too young to just retire, he continued to teach. Lastly, at the University of Massachusetts, he continued to fly. His last plane was a beach debonair. It is therefore fitting that William Wallace Ford, a man whose vision paved the way for the development of Army aviation as it's known today, 
be enshrined into the official Aviation Hall of Fame of the Commonwealth of Kentucky.